five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. This is about space. America's return to space with news and information on our U.S. space program. From our About Space Today World Headquarters, I'm John Gomez. This week in space, three more countries signed the Artemis Accords, an update on the Mars Sample Return Program, and NASA greenlights its Dragonfly mission to Titan. This and more next, as America and the world is listening to About Space Today. D&D Cruise and Tours is the official agent for About Space, and we invite you to come fly away to all-inclusive resort island destinations, or a cruise vacation from Port Canaveral, and even visit the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex, or just come and see the parks. Call for a discount cruise or an island getaway or the Florida beaches. Call today. The call is free, and so are our services. Call 877-747-8631. That's 877-747-8631. We are Florida's group travel specialists. Welcome back. Last week, three more nations signed the Artemis Accords, a series of non-binding bilateral agreements between the United States government and other world governments that elaborates on the norms expected to be followed in outer space. Switzerland, Sweden, and Slovenia all signed on between April 15th and April 19th, bringing the total number of countries signed to 39. The accords were signed in 2020 and remain open for signature indefinitely. Additional signatories can choose to participate in Artemis program activities or may continue to commit to the principles for responsible exploration of the moon. Still no word from Russia or China. In an April 15th briefing, NASA officials announced they would solicit proposals from NASA centers and from industry on innovative designs to reshape its Mars sample return effort after an internal review confirmed the ballooning costs of the overall program. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson reminded the press about NASA's commitment to retrieve at least some of the Mars samples. I think uh, it's fair to say that we are committed to retrieving the samples that are there, at least some of those samples. And at the end of the day, there'll be 30 plus samples, uh, some in the rover and some uh, on the surface. But he also made clear the reason for NASA seeking out return program proposals. The bottom line is that $11 billion is too expensive, and not returning samples until 2040 is unacceptably too long. Nicola Fox, NASA Associate Administrator for Science, said that while NASA is looking for innovative approaches, it's not necessarily looking for new technologies. Um, actually, what we're, in, what we're hoping is that we will be able to get back to some more um, traditional, tried and true Um, architectures, um, things that do not require huge technological leaps, um, but that have high heritage and thereby we can lower the the risk and the cost and also the time for um, development. Anything requiring huge leaps in technology, usually from experience, takes a lot of time. NASA issued a request for proposals on April 16th with a due date of May 17th, and the agency is issuing contracts for 90-day studies shortly thereafter. Stay tuned to About Space Today for more updates on the Mars Sample Return Program. Finally, last week NASA confirmed that its long-delayed Dragonfly drone mission to Saturn's largest moon, Titan, is on track to launch in July of 2028. Dragonfly, a drone the size of a car, is being built by the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory in Laurel, Maryland, and will reach Titan in 2034. Over the following two years, the nuclear-powered drone is expected to perform one hop every Titan day hunting for prebiotic chemical processes at various pre-selected locations on the frigid moon, which is known to contain organic materials. Titan is the only moon in the solar system known to be blanketed by a dense atmosphere and host liquid seas on its surface. About Space Today will keep you updated on the Dragonfly mission in the near future. Make sure you check out our Facebook page, aboutspace.today, for launches and landings, and invite your family and friends to listen weekly. 
You can find us on your favorite podcast platforms like Apple, Spotify, Libsyn, and more. Be sure to join David Denault every month for Special Report and Don Meyer every Friday for America in Space. Whether you're listening from the International Space Station or just on your phone, thanks for joining me. I'm John Gomez, and you just learned a little bit about space today. Thank you.